Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, we're on the trail of dinosaurs on a Jurassic hunt. Yes, that's hunt, H-U-N-T. Nothing rude here. Shady businessman Lyndon, played by Justin Theney, runs a secret remote wildlife preserve where the world's riches can hunt genetically created dinosaurs for sport. Welcoming a new set of hunters, among them Courtney Loggins Parker, Tarkin Dustbill's Valentine, Ruben Plas Torres, and Antoine Torbert's Blackhawk, Lyndon soon discovers that Parker is an undercover activist, hoping to expose Lyndon's operation. When the group's guide Marco, played by J. Michael Weiss, is killed, the group must fight for survival survival as Lyndon tries to kill Parker and everyone in it to keep the hunt a secret. So Jurassic Hunt, <laughs> there is nothing funny about this film's title, but I am going to be careful saying it, I could be demonetized. So this movie is directed by Hank Braxton, who has helmed a number of B-movies with Interesting titles, shall we say. His CV includes the likes of Snake Out of Compton and Dragon Soldiers, which was released last year and features a number of the same cast and crew. And it seems like Braxton has definitely carved himself a little niche helming schlocky creature features, where the plots are generally the same. It's about a group of people being hunted, except they change the creatures. So it might be a dinosaur in this movie and it might be dragons in the next and so on and so forth. Forth. The same niche has definitely been carved by the writing team of this movie, Jeffrey Giles and Jacob E. Bancroft, who it seems specialise in dinosaur movies, especially alien dinosaur movies. That seems to pop up on their CV quite a bit. You've got the likes of Alien Expedition, which I guess buries the lead a little bit slightly, and Jurassic Galaxy, which definitely does not. And it seems like those two movies, given a cursory glance over their cast list, also share some of the same actors as well. So it does seem like there's a little pool and community here just making kind of schlocky creature features to pop up on Amazon and inevitably onto maybe, say, the sci-fi channel or something like that. It definitely seems like the kind of movies that are meant to be the heir successor to, say, Sharknado, but for dinosaurs. There's definitely a sort of dino-sploitation that you see very frequently in low-budget direct-to-video fodder. So you must be wondering to yourself, why are you reviewing something like this? One, this was released by Lionsgate, of all people, and two... Well, obviously, look at the title. It's hilarious. They actually called a movie Jurassic Hunt? Are you serious? Are you aware of how rude that sounds if I say it too quickly? When it comes to reviewing a movie like this, you have to adjust your priorities a little bit because the filmmakers here aren't trying to make something grey or even legitimate. They're trying to make something bad on purpose. That is their audience. This is specifically catered towards that crowd, the sort of bad movie movie fans that search on Amazon looking for something to make fun of with their friends together over beer and pizza, your MST3Kers and your riffers, my kind of people. If you follow this channel, you'll know that I've made fun of plenty of bad movies over the years, and this is specifically the kind of film that I probably would have sought out back in the day, something with a ridiculous title, cover art, and logline, and honestly, we're not too far off asylum territory here. The problem that I had in my experience is that a lot of these films promised a lot, but ultimately delivered very little. It's actually surprisingly hard to make one of these that's genuinely quite entertaining and mockable in its own right without being borderline unwatchable. And the problem with something like Jurassic Hunt is that it's kind of middling when it comes to that sort of fare because, yeah, it's bad, but it's also maybe not bad or really entertaining enough. Like so many of its ilk, a lot of Jurassic Hunt's problems largely stem from the fact that it's cheap, and yeah, that's a thing that you can make fun of. In fact, there's a lot of bad movies where obviously they had budgetary problems, and there's that gap between what the filmmakers aspired to do and what they actually managed to accomplish. The problem with something like Jurassic Hunt is that it isn't cheap in a charming way, it's just cheap in an obvious one and a distracting way at that. 
And I would argue that the premise here is actually sort of inspired for this kind of bad movie. You know, this idea of hunters going after dinosaurs in a wildlife preserve. It's simple, it's quick, it's a good log line. But the problem is that the filmmakers just simply don't have the resources to pull it off. They either need to do more with the premise or just simply have more money. In fact, I could very easily see a Hollywood movie with this exact premise actually being fairly entertaining in its own right because they have the resources behind it to actually do the idea justice. Whereas here, right out of the gate, it is immediately distracting the obvious that a lot of what's going on is very much limited by what they can actually do. Jurassic Hunt has a lot of downtime in it. There's a lot of time spent with the characters between dino attacks, which are surprisingly scarce in this movie. Considering it's called Jurassic Hunt, it actually feels like the dinosaurs are pretty much an afterthought here, which I guess they had to be, considering they probably only had about 10 cents to make this movie and it shows. But it also manifests itself in the way the film looks, the way the film is edited. Everything shows the fact that it is cheap, but not in a way where you would actually find it kind of amusing, just more in a sort of, this is not very well made. There's not a lot of ambition here beyond the initial idea itself, and that is what I think separates a good bad movie from your simple bottom of the barrel. It's because they are actually trying hard, in spite of their shortcomings, to the point where it comes across as sincere and actually endearing in its own right. Whereas something like this, while not on the same level as, say, a Sharknado sequel, it's too knowing, it's too aware of what kind of film it is to really capture that kind of magic. It's the sort of movie where they went, ah, just put Jurassic in the title and some dinosaurs, and we can just ride fully on Steven Spielberg's coattails because everybody loves Jurassic Park. So they just invoke that movie constantly. You got T-Rexes, you got Velociraptors, you got Dilophosaurus, which is portrayed exactly how it is in Spielberg's film with its spitting acid in people's faces and the neck fans out. Apparently that's nothing like how Dilophosauruses actually were in real life, but that's purely an invention of Spielberg's film. And they want to remind you of it because that's all they got. They don't need to fill in a backstory. They don't need to explain how did this company create the dinosaurs or anything like that because they don't even bother to try. They just go, hey, you remember Jurassic Park? I guess that's a thing that's happening. There's sort of some very vague gestures that actually Lyndon is sort of a middleman in a much larger operation. They're getting the dinosaur shipped in from somewhere else. But really, that whole side of the movie is just completely undeveloped to the point where I don't even think the filmmakers bother to think about it at all. It's because the filmmakers know that their budget is so low, they can't even try to do something like that. So they just simply don't. And that's the difference, is that there are certain filmmakers that just blaze a trail in spite of those limitations, whereas there are others that make bad movies fully aware of what they can actually accomplish. And I think that Jurassic Hunt is the latter category. As you would expect for a movie like this, the acting ranges between passable and outright terrible, but it does seem like some people are having fun with what they're given. Justin Theney in particular really seems to be having a ball playing the bad guy, Lyndon, this kind of preening, narcissistic villain in a very sharp suit, the kind that goes, not the face, whenever he's being beaten up. He plays that role with the right amount of camp, but not to the point where it becomes too over the top and he doesn't have any kind of menace or cunning whenever he needs to in a certain moment. And it definitely feels like he's a lot more short in his part than a lot of his fellow cast members. Ruben Pla as one of the other hunters also I think does fairly well in this movie but it helps that he gets a lot of screen time and therein lies the problem. Like so many of this kind of film, Jurassic Hunt whittles through its characters way too quickly. Like I know they're meant to be dinosaur chow but you gotta put meat on those bones before they actually become dead meat and make them memorable and distinctive. And the movie fails to do that. A lot of the characters feel extremely undercharacterized 
if you even know who they are at all. The movie goes through them so quickly, I actually lost track of who died, only with the exception of the characters that were still around, which at a certain point was only about three or four, and really, that I think is a major issue. When you get to that kind of level, a status quo develops, and you know as an audience member, well, they're not going to kill any of these people off for a little bit of time yet, because otherwise the movie's going to be over. There is some vague gestures of characterization here and there, but honestly, it isn't very much at all. There's one hunter that appears to have some sort of sexual crush on the dinosaurs in one very brief passing exchange where he talks about wrestling like i guess that's meant to be towards the bad movie crowd and there's definitely one with a character just simply named rocket launcher and all he does is he pulls out a rocket launcher announces rocket launcher fires it and then immediately gets eaten Again, a pair of characters playing towards the crowd that this audience is meant to be for, but really, they're just around so fleetingly, and instead they should have made them more developed or more recurring characters. One of the biggest missed opportunities in my mind was the character of Blackhawk, played by Antoine Torbert, who I actually thought was one of the most charismatic and confident members of the entire cast. He plays a warlord who actually gets quite a lot of early screen time and prominence to show off, especially in one fairly lengthy scene where he gets an entire monologue all to himself, and I actually think that he's one of the best actors of the entire cast, but it's clear the filmmakers weren't taking advantage of that at all, because right after that speech, he's immediately shown the exit door, and that's such a shame, because I thought they were going somewhere with this character, like they were going to make him a secondary villain of some kind that the rest of the group was going to have to go up against as things increasingly got worse, but instead, he's just immediately got rid of, like he's just some minor character, and it's really quite an embarrassing way to go out as well, and it's so such a shame. They could have done so much more with him, but it's clear the filmmakers didn't know what they were doing. Unfortunately, the lead of the movie, Courtney Loggins, is terrible. Admittedly, some stuff isn't her fault. The fact she's sat all wearing camera glasses for the majority of the running time, it has the side effect of making her look like a gun-toting Velma Dinkley. The problem, though, is that Loggins isn't a very good performer, and she's not convincing in a part that wasn't especially well written to begin with. You can sort of see how this was meant to be. She's the only woman on this hunt, and one of the very few female cast members in general, so immediately she stands out on that level, and I think it's meant to be something of a surprise that she can actually hold her own in this very macho, testosterone-driven environment, especially as several other members of the hunt directly threaten and menace her, sometimes sexually, but actually she's tough and she knows what she's doing. The problem is that Loggins doesn't look like she's tough and knows her way around a gun a lot of the time, and just because you put her in a leather jacket, that doesn't make her an action hero. You can tell she's meant to be a Ripley kind of character, but that really does not come across. And then you've got the activist side of the character, where clearly we're meant to sympathize with her. She's meant to be the moral center of the movie. The problem is that the writers overplay that hand, especially in her dialogue with the other characters, where presumably she's meant to be filling in the backstories for each of them, but it just seems like she's lecturing them about various immoral deeds they have in their history, and how immoral the whole situation they're in is, which, yeah, of course, they know, they don't care. It's an illegal dinosaur hunting expedition. They know exactly what they came here for. And so that just feels really heavy-handed. And also, it strains credibility on another level because she is so upfront about this that you genuinely wonder, how did no one know she was an activist in the first place? How is that not spotted or found in a background check beforehand? She's 
pretty brazen about why she's actually here to the point where it genuinely makes no sense. And then we come to the dinosaurs in this movie and oh boy they look awful. You know why I said there isn't a lot of dinosaur action in this movie? Yeah there's a reason for that. The filmmakers know exactly how bad their effects are and try to limit them as much as possible. If you've seen a film like this you know exactly what to expect from the effects, namely off-the-shelf generic assets that are clumsily integrated into the live-action footage. And I use the word integrated very loosely here. There's no accounting for lighting or anything like that. They're just simply comped on top of the live-action footage, which is very, very evident whenever they actually have to interact with the live-action cast because they just float on top of them whilst the actors struggle to work out where the dinosaurs are supposed to be and it's very obvious that the animations don't line up with the live-action footage around it. It is embarrassing to watch and also the dinosaurs look very low resolution like i get it i'm not expecting this to be up to the same level as jurassic park even in 1993 but this feels really below par especially considering that this is the central selling point of your movie it's called jurassic hunt you better have some half decent dinosaurs in it instead they hardly animate them half the time when they're not doing their stock walks cycles there's moments where velociraptors jump and by jump i mean they lift off the ground and float it's really quite astonishing how little effort there is on this side of the movie to the point where the filmmakers really go above all effort to try and avoid featuring them in any way if they can at times resorting to pov footage so they don't have to use the dinosaur assets that they're clearly ashamed of as they should be. But the dinosaurs aren't the only bad effects. Physical props look awful as well. There are severed arms and hands that are so completely plastic and unconvincing, you could swear they've been bought at a Spirit Halloween store. And then, on top of everything else, the filmmakers use this blood splattering onto camera effect, and they do this about seven or eight times. And that's seven or eight times more than anyone should. This looks absolutely awful and completely unconvincing. And it's clear they didn't have any money for gore whatsoever. And even if they did, that would require actually animating the dinosaurs with the live action actors. So instead, whenever a character gets killed, pfft, just awful, absolutely outrageously terrible. Don't ever use those kind of effects. So yeah, Jurassic Hunt is bad, we knew that already, but is it fun bad or just bad bad? And I would argue it's more the latter and the former, unfortunately. I mean, it does have its moments, and if you're an experienced bad movie fan, it's competent enough to be watchable, although having said that, this movie does have a lot of technical problems with regards to its focus, to the point where I genuinely wondered if this was being filmed on a Panasonic DSLR in autofocus, because it keeps jumping on the actors and then off of them and then back and forth, and in fact there's actually moments where the dinosaurs are composited on visibly out of focus footage, but those aren't the issues here. The problem is that Jurassic Hunt just isn't fun enough. There's too many stretches of the movie that are just kind of dull, really. It lacks the spark, invention, and yes, sometimes surprise of the very best bad movies. It's got a great setup, but it does very little with it, really. I mean, you will get the odd chuckle, especially if you're watching it with your friends. I think it would improve in that environment compared to my experience solo. Having said that though, there are better bad movies to pick if you're having that kind of night. Although, having said that, there's also worse movies you could pick for that kind of night. I don't think this has really been obvious on camera, but I've actually been wearing a Billy and the Clonosaurus t-shirt, which I felt was fitting, to be honest. If you like this review, then you can take a bite at my Kofi, or the hunt really begins over at my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks, including access to my Discord server. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. The Jurassic Hunters have become the Jurassic Hunted.